You know, I've always had a soft spot for the Luigi's Mansion series. I, I think it's just because Luigi actually got a shot at his own game back when the GameCube released. And since then, I have enjoyed the series. It did find its way to the 3DS with Dark Moon. And now it's back to the Switch with Luigi's Mansion 3. Just straight up the third game. Luigi's Mansion 3, no subheading, no nothing. And I do think at this time, at least for me, it's the sleeper hit of 2019, at least on the Switch. And I say sleeper hit because it's coming out at a time when everyone's talking about different games. We're talking about Death Stranding right now. We're talking about uh, Pokemon, which is always being talked about, especially right now. But Luigi's Mansion 3 kind of showed up. People talked about it for like a day or two, and I'm already seeing people kind of forget about it. And I think it has a chance at being the best Switch game of this year. Like, straight up. Next Level Games really did something here. So to get started, Luigi's Mansion 3 takes place in a hotel. Not necessarily a mansion, but the story is pretty straightforward. You have an antagonist that captures all of Luigi's friends, whether it's Princess Peach, the different Toads, Mario, and encases them in picture frames, which you go through the hotel and find. And in order to do that, you have to go through all the different floors. And basically, they wall them off by having elevator buttons. So as you go through a floor, you'll find the next floor's button, and then you'll be off and running. And they have several floors to go through. But the first thing that caught my eye when I turned this game on it was the visuals. I, this might be one of the best looking Switch games I've seen so far. And a lot of that I think has to do with just the game itself looking, I'm just, I'm gonna say clean, like visually, even on a larger monitor or display or TV, it still looks clean. Like we'll talk about Switch games looking blurry at times, right? But Next Level Games and Nintendo did a very good job making this game look very, very sharp on a TV or in handheld mode. I, I was I was very, very surprised at how this looks. And I know other first party games like like Mario Odyssey look very clean as well, but this one is like the is like next level. It's like they they remembered what anti-aliasing was. I think they also had good art direction. The colors pop off the screen, even in close-ups with Luigi, looks very, very good overall. And the animations in the game are like top notch. Like Everything that's going on, whether it's the movement in with Luigi, when they're trying to convey something that's happening, whether he's frustrated with stuff going on around him, whether he's sad, or when he's scared. He, he gets scared constantly in this game. Like, I, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, how much longer Luigi's going to last because he is constantly getting jump scared in this game. And they'll do that fun thing where he'll get scared and he'll kind of... He'll, he'll get super, super stiff and try to walk around with like straight legs and stay. It, it's, it's very fun and they do a good job overall with the animations and, tr and conveying emotion without saying anything or just situations that are going on. I, I really like the way it's all come together and, and looks so good in motion. But as you're going through the different floors, you'll notice something very, very quickly. They're each kind of themed a bit different, but they all feel so unique in the ideas and the puzzles that they present to you. And I don't want to just tell you about all of the ending floors because there are some that are a pretty cool surprise. I mean, they showed off some of it in the previews, whether it was the, the fact that one of the floors has sand all over the place. It's almost like a desert level, right? It, and it's kind of what happens is you go to the different floors and it's basically like different worlds, basically in a Mario game almost, where you go to different worlds and like the settings are different and the enemies might be a bit different but in here you'll go to different levels or floors in the hotel and in one you might be trying to solve movie sets so that you can get a certain item and, and complete that stage basically or you might be going through different stores with Guiji which we'll get to in a second in order to retrieve a key so that you can open a door and then subsequently get the next button like the puzzles change depending on what floor you're on and it really it just embraces the theme of that floor. But in order to complete some of those puzzles, you need some tools. And one of the biggest ones that you have is Guiji, which is a gelatinous version of Luigi that 
you can pretty much summon and wipe out whenever you need to. And uh, it's it's funny in some of the situations because he's pretty much allergic to water. So if he gets hit with water, he just dissolves. But you'll use Guiji in several situations, like constantly. And it also works into co-op where someone can control Guiji. But if you're playing by yourself, you'll switch between Luigi and Guiji and pretty much solve different puzzles, whether you need one of them to hold down a rope while the other one runs around or there there are several times where you'll switch back and forth when there is a, a bit of timing to it and you have to hurry up because there's a clock that's ticking. They really play around with the idea a lot and the idea that Guiji is expendable. Very much so. There, there's there's a boss that I, I thought was really funny where, where you're trying to figure out how are you going to get this boss to, uh, to to eat something and make, make them vulnerable. And I thought to myself, I said, wait a minute, Guiji, you're up. Good luck. <laughs> But the puzzles are the biggest thing about this game and they'll work them in the boss battles. They're constantly evolving and changing and they'll do some fun stuff. There are points in the game where you can't necessarily see a certain thing you need. I'm trying to be kind of vague here so I don't ruin the, the puzzle for you. But then you'll look over and you see in the mirror because the camera's fixed and one wall is transparent, but the mirror will show you on this side that there is a button, for example, on the other. And it, it's such an interesting idea with some of these puzzles and the way that they kind of help you, but not necessarily. You may get to a point where you just get outright frustrated. You don't know what to do. And then all of a sudden it'll click and it all comes together. And that is very, very satisfying when it comes to these games that have these puzzles to them is the fact that you figured it out yourself and it all just kind of comes together. It's, it's very satisfying and there's a bit of accomplishment there when you're doing it. Now the combat is is very similar to think of something like Ghostbusters that's what you're doing here in fact if you like Ghostbusters the overall idea and the theme of, of the movie or maybe you played a Ghostbusters game you might as well go buy this one because you're capturing ghosts you have your polder Gus G00 and you're running around using a flashlight to blast light on ghosts and then suck them up and in order to do that you'll grab them afterwards and then you get to slam them around the room and it is so satisfying. I mean, you take the ghost and you, you just slam that ghost into the wall, into the floor, into other ghosts. And especially when you start racking up these combos by hitting ghosts with other ghosts, it just becomes very, very fun. And they'll introduce other ones, ones that are like invisible and try to grab you. You'll have these big blockhead looking ones that'll try to charge at you. So they change it up somewhat. They'll put sunglasses on them so that they can block your light and you may have to pull it away from them. There, There's a lot of stuff when it comes to the bosses, but at least the enemies are also interesting enough to keep you kind of guessing it on your toes. Now, in order to use that polder gust, you have to get kind of used to the controls. And it was a, a bit of a learning curve to do this because since the, the camera is fixed, the right stick will pretty much work from where Luigi is facing forward, okay? So you'll move the stick around, and the right stick will rotate, and the left stick, of course, moves him in place around the room. And it, it is it is tough at first. I found the best control scheme that I, that I used was that I would use gyro to a degree. The gyro that I would use was on the pro controller, and basically if I looked, if I moved the pro controller around, I would look up and down, and then everything else would be controlled using the shoulder buttons, whether it's L and R for the flashlight or the plunger gun, and then L or ZL and ZR would use the polder gust for uh, either pulling air in or pushing air out, and it all kind of worked together to where I didn't really have to take my thumbs off of the thumb sticks using the gyro and those shoulder buttons and it worked a bit better. It, just, it definitely took some getting used to. And while I've talked about a ton of praise for this game, there was one big thing that kind of let me down here. It was a bit disappointing. Now, while you're playing through the game, you will unlock something called the lab. And I got excited when I heard about this because I thought we were going to bring in some, I'll say mild RPG elements to it in the sense that while you're playing the game, you are collecting money. And this was kind of built up in the game with, uh, with EGAD where saying, oh, if you see money, 
you know, pick it up. I, I have some great ideas for it. I have some I, ideas to, to get you some really cool things to help you out in your journey. And I thought to myself, oh, great. I'm going to be upgrading my Poltergust, maybe my ability, something extra there to upgrade so that I feel stronger from the beginning to when I finish the game. But that didn't happen. Basically, you spend your money on extra lives, essentially, and the ability to find enemies, we'll say, in the game. It and gems it just it didn't really kind of culminate in what i thought it was going to be with the lab I, I got excited to see what i could possibly do with the character and give me more of a reason i would say to collect money rather than just a high score and that it's kind of a shame i just wish there was a little extra there to make you stay on a floor and look for money possibly to make yourself that much stronger, but it never actually happened. That was a big letdown for me anyway. But all in all, Luigi's Mansion 3 will probably take you roughly 10 to 12 hours for just a straight playthrough, and longer if you want to collect everything, as each floor has different gems and money that you'll find in hidden spots, and it's just overall a fun experience to go through. Made a lot of sense, I think, at Halloween. I wish it came out like a week before Halloween, because that would have given people kind of a, a week to play through it with that, with kind of with that, uh, I, I guess that time of year but i think it's a great game to get into i think it's a fun game to to play if you just want a, a i guess more of a puzzle game without an obscene amount of action that will keep you going and i think there's a case that this could be the best switch game of the year i i really think it's gonna be a sleeper hit and i i hope that more people pick this up overall because i do think right now it's the best Luigi's Mansion we've had so far. Let me know what you guys think about Luigi's Mansion 3, though, down below. I'm very curious. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.